Chapter 161, Mysterious Heaven Method, though the seat was narrow, Tang Wuling was fortunately still a child so there was just enough room for him to sit cross-legged, and with the tall and reliable Wu Zhangkong blocking any prying eyes, he could continue his lessons without any worries. He gently urged his soul power to slowly circulate through his body, he was still unfamiliar with the complicated pathways of the Mysterious Heaven Method, and he needed to circulate his soul power through meridians he'd never even noticed before. There was one area that proved to be quite a challenge for him, where his meridians were particularly complex. The only thing he could do was slowly explore within himself and build his understanding bit by bit. Luckily for Tang Wulin, Wu Zhangkong was present to provide him with guidance whenever he ran into any troubles. Every time he ran into an impasse, a cold stream of energy would enter his body and guide his soul power back onto the right path. Through trial and error and with Wu Zhangkong's guidance, Tang Wulin's understanding of his meridians grew deeper and deeper. In such a manner, Tang Wulin was finally able to complete one cycle of soul power circulation as outlined in the mysterious heaven method. He gradually tuned out his surroundings and wholly focused on the task at hand. Slowly but steadily, his soul power was on its way to completing another cycle. Withdrawing his hand from Tang Wulin's stomach, Wu Zhangkong gave a slight nod of approval. This child's perception is pretty good. He only took two hours to complete his first circulation cycle with my guidance. Not bad. When he was helping Tang Wulin, Wu Zhangkong was also pleasantly surprised to discover that Tang Wulin's meridians were far stronger than normal. Not even three or four ring soul masters had meridians that could compare. With Tang Wulin's tough meridians and his soul power at the one ring level, he would be able to circulate his soul power quickly without worrying about his body. This was the advantage of a powerful physique. The soul train steadily sped along, but even with its high speeds, it would take one day's worth of travel to reach Heaven Do City. Fortunately for the passengers, there were over a dozen stops at major cities in between, giving them a chance to stretch their legs. Even though it was Tang Wulin's first time cultivating the mysterious Heaven method, he had somehow managed to enter a state of deep meditation, not leaving it once. Wu Zhangkong could feel the soul power within Tang Wulin's body circulating more smoothly and with greater speed. This was the result of possessing both great perception and a strong body. The deep meditative state he was in was highly beneficial to soul masters, but rarely entered. Wu Zhangkong was a bit Right and though, from the looks of things, Tang Wuling might not even wake up when they arrived at their destination. Entering a deep meditation as soon as he was introduced to the mysterious heaven method meant that he would come out of this meditative state with a complete understanding of the method and the optimal benefits from it. He would not need to familiarize himself with the method any further. Wu Zhangkong held up a hand to stop a passing train attendant. Hello, what may I help you with? The train attendant's eyes widened a bit at Wu Zhangkong's handsomeness and a blush found its way onto her cheeks. Her voice was clearly sweeter now than when she had been talking to the other passengers. I'm sorry to bother you, but I'm looking for the conductor. Wu Zhangkong said in his usual cold tone. You're looking for the conductor? She's busy at the moment, so could you tell me what matter you're looking for her first? Perhaps I'll be able to assist you instead. Although Wu Zhangkong's handsome figure had set her heart aflutter, she still retained her professionalism. You won't be able to help me. Please ask the conductor to come here. As he spoke, Wu Zhangkong raised his right hand to reveal several floating halos. Yellow, yellow, purple, purple, black, black. Six soul rings rose in this order. They were visible only to the attendant as she was currently positioned in a way that obstructed the gazes of others. Ah. Uh. The attendant couldn't help but cry out at the shocking sight. After the soul rings disappeared in a flash, Wu Zhangkong curtly nodded at her. On the Dolo continent, this was the easiest way to demonstrate one's strength. Soul rings equaled strength and status after all. Not only was Wu Zhangkong a six-ring soul emperor, he was even a powerful expert that possessed a pair of ten thousand-year black soul rings. How else was the attendant supposed to have reacted? Hey, you! Don't use your handsomeness to take advantage of young ladies. A tall and robust man had appeared beside the attendant. He hadn't seen Wu Zhangkong's soul rings, but he had heard the attendant's cry of alarm. Wu Zhangkong only shot him a glance and remained seated with his signature cold and silent manner. Boy, I was talking to you. Stand up. The tall man clearly had a short temper. It's nothing, nothing at all. The train attendant had finally snapped out of her daze and hastily stopped the man from approaching Wu Zhangkong. I was just surprised at their credentials. They really do have an important matter to talk to the conductor about. Thank you for looking out for me, but you can return to your seat now. The tall man cast a doubtful look at the attendant before mischievously laughing. Don't be afraid, little sister. I didn't like that pretty boy from the start. If he dares to try anything with you, just tell this big brother, and I'll help you punish him. It's fine, it's fine. The attendant quickly assured. She turned back to Wu Zhangkong and respectfully said, "Please wait a moment. I will immediately get the conductor." Stating this, she hurriedly left. Perhaps it was because of the attendant's deferential attitude to Wu Zhangkong, but the tall man no longer bothered them. Not too long after, the attendant returned, followed by a middle-aged woman. "Hello, I am this train conductor. What may I help you with?" The train conductor spoke with the utmost courtesy. This was only natural, of course. In front of her was a young, six ring soul emperor. Considering his age and the strength he possessed, she could only imagine how high his status must be and from what great clan he hailed from. The conductor saw a slight change in Wu Zhangkong's expression before she discovered with alarm that they had been isolated from the clamor of their surroundings. My disciple has entered a state of deep meditation, and I don't know how long this will last. May I know if this train is heading anywhere else after reaching Heaven Do City? Deep meditation? For someone who wasn't a soul master, these two words didn't have much meaning, but she still answered quickly. We will be resting in Heaven Do City for one day before continuing westward all the way to Sun Moon City. This train runs from east to west, across the whole continent. That is why this train is also called the Traveler. Wu Zhangkong frowned. Then is it possible to stop in Heaven Do City for a while longer? The conductor made an awkward face. I'm afraid that's impossible. Many travelers have already bought tickets, so we wouldn't be holding up our end of the deal if we didn't continue on. Nodding in understanding, Wu Zhangkong said, Okay, I understand. I'll think of some other way then. All right. Sorry for the inconvenience. If there's anything else I may help with, please notify me, the conductor said with a smile. After she left, the tall man from before said with disdain, What kind of farce is this? The conductor came yet you guys didn't even speak a word. As if he hadn't heard the man's complaints, Wu Zhangkong closed his eyes and ignored him. Bored now, the tall man didn't continue to riding Wu Zhangkong. Like this, the soul train smoothly reached Heaven Do City. To all passengers, please make sure to take all of your luggage and exit in an orderly fashion. Due to the cramped quarters, we ask that you watch out for your belongings and your step to prevent any injuries from falling. Speakers projected the conductor's voice throughout the train. Passengers stood up one by one to make their way to the exit. But Wu Zhangkong remained still. Tang Wulin was still in a deep meditation. His brows wrinkled as he thought about his plans. Not too long after, he and Tang Wulin were the only ones left on the train. The attendant passed with tidying up the train walked over and politely said, We've arrived at the station. You must disembark now. Chapter 162. Deep Meditation Troubles. Wu Zhangkong stood up. I want to bring this chair with me. He has money to compensate for the cost. He took out some Federation bills as he spoke. You want to bring this chair with you? The train attendant had never met such an eccentric passenger before. What did he mean by bring the chair with him? Very soon, Wu Zhangkong explained the meaning of his words with a simple motion. A ripple of blue light welled up in Wu Zhangkong's hand as a chill swept through the surroundings. A blue flash later, the train attendant was shocked to see that the chair with the child sitting atop of it was steadily hoisted up by the white robed man, carrying the chair with only his left hand. He took large strides towards the train exit. Huh. He really carried the chair away. Heavens. He detached the entire chair. The attendant hurriedly took out her soul communicator. Conductor, conductor, over here, there's. And
Wu Zhang Kong agreed without a hint of resistance. The officers were stunned at such an icy and tranquil response. Their impression of him changed to one of a strange man, but surprisingly easy to talk to. They were already aware of his status as a six-ring soul emperor, an existence impossible for them to stand against, and they were nearly trembling from apprehension. Fortunately for them, Wu Zhang Kong didn't resist and was actually compliant, still carrying the chair that Tang Wuling sat on. Wu Zhang Kong was escorted to the police station in charge of patrolling Heaven Do City's train station. An officer wearing a captain's badge welcomed them with an even larger entourage of officers accompanied by a pair of gigantic mechas surpassing 10 meters in height. The entire police force in charge of patrolling the train station had gathered here. Hello, you are a soul emperor, correct? The captain cut right to the chase. Wu Zhang Kong was expressionless as he dropped the concealment on his aura, six soul rings rising from his feet. Coupled with the two black soul rings, the captain was at a loss in the face of the sheer power of Wu Zhang Kong's aura. Greetings, revered soul emperor, said the captain as he gave a slight bow. Although ordinary people could use soul devices now and possessed some degree of strength, they were still conscious of the insurmountable gap between them and true soul masters. And above all, before him was a soul emperor. Even for the police captain, it was his first time meeting an esteemed soul emperor. How could he possibly dare be disrespectful? Black soul rings were at the ten thousand year level, a realm that could rend the heavens and raise the earth. Even in his wildest dreams, he wouldn't dare to offend an expert of this level. Wu Zhang Kong curtly said, "I apologize for troubling you, but my disciple has entered a deep meditative state and must not be disturbed. Because of that, I could only act in such a way. If it's possible, please provide us with a quiet room and some food and water." An odd expression made its way onto the faces of all the police officers. They had never encountered a suspect so cool that he would actually make demands before the questioning even began. Yet, what was even more unexpected was how the captain immediately replied, All right. Please follow me then. I have already heard of your circumstances from the conductor and have asked the higher-ups for orders, so a quiet room has already been prepared for you. Please excuse me for cautiousness. After all, you are a very powerful individual. Lead the way. Wu Zhang Kong wasn't one for small talk. Just as promised, the room prepared by the captain was utterly silent. Even the windows had been sealed with soundproofing material. High-class food and water were soon delivered. There really was no room for neglect when dealing with a soul emperor. In truth, the chief police officer had been quite reassured when he heard that Wu Zhang Kong had left a stack of bills with the attendant after slicing apart the chair. The fact that he bothered to pay for damages meant that he harbored no malice. If he indeed possessed ill intentions, the chief would have long called for backup. Although he had two standard megas great Wu Zhang Kong, they couldn't even be considered a match for a soul emperor, let alone one that possessed two black soul rings. A soul master powerful enough to possess a black ten thousand year spirit soul had a boundless future. At the very least, it was guaranteed that he would break through to become a seven ring soul sage. At that level, his status would be equal to that of a second tier city's chief executive. Tang Wuling was completely unaware of his surroundings as he immersed himself in this state of deep meditation. He felt as if his body was stretching out endlessly to absorb the energy of the heavens and the earth, bringing him an indescribable feeling of comfort. The soul power within him gently undulated as they cleansed his meridians. In return, the meridians gradually absorbed the soul power. His martial soul, soul power, body, and bloodline were all harmonizing together in his state of deep meditation. This type of situation wouldn't give a major leap in strength by any means, but in this harmonization process, his body basked in a feeling of wonder. It laid the foundation for a stronger body and smoother cultivation in the future. After some time had passed, Tang Wuling awoke. As he opened his eyes, he immediately felt the changes in his body, as if it had been refined completely, letting out a faint but long breath. A rumble resounded from his body as his soul power squirmed and penetrated into every part of his body. This feeling of freedom was simply impossible to describe. So comfortable. Tang Wuling joyfully exclaimed, There didn't seem to be any change even after his soul power returned to his dantian. In fact, there seemed to be slightly less than before, yet he clearly felt that his soul power had solidified by several degrees, giving him the idea that if he used his soul skills or the golden dragon claw now, he would be able to use it a longer period of time. Where am I? As his soul power calmed down, Tang Wuling finally took note of his surroundings. It was only a second later that he discovered Wu Zhang Kong meditating nearby. Teacher Wu? Shouldn't we be on a train? What is this little black room we're in? You're awake. Tang Wuling was able to clearly see Wu Zhang Kong's eyes as he opened them in the darkness. They seemed to contain a vast, starry sky within them. Tang Wuling felt as if his soul was being sucked into those deep eyes. Teacher Wu, where is this? We've already reached Heaven Do City. Since you're awake now, let's be on our way. Wu Zhang Kong swiftly stood up. Tang Wuling hastily followed suit and trailed behind him to exit the black room. A loud rumble came from Tang Wuling's stomach all of a sudden. A crimson blush immediately colored his face, but he still trembled from intense hunger. Hungry? MN. Tang Wuling lowered his head in embarrassment. Eat then. You can eat all of the food in the room. Wu Zhang Kong pointed to the food. It was only then that Tang Wuling noticed that there was a pile of food on the floor and several cups of water. Unable to resist his hunger, Tang Wuling began to gorge himself. For the first time, Wu Zhang Kong was exposed to Tang Wuling's eating habits. A quarter of an hour passed, and even Wu Zhang Kong's icy expression had become dull. Was it really the right choice to bring this kid with me after all? He. He just really eats way too much. Tang Wuling wasn't aware that he had actually been meditating for a full seven days. All he knew was that he was ravenous and needed to fill himself up. It didn't take long before the pile of highly nutritious food disappeared into the abyss that was Tang Wuling's stomach. Even when all that was left was the food packaging, Tang Wuling was still hungrily licking his lips. He was actually still hungry after devouring over a dozen boxes of food. Let's go, Wu Zhang Kong said in a slightly off tone. Oh. A team of guards respectfully escorted them out of the train station, taking in the scenery around him. Tang Wuling finally began to understand the difference in scale between an ancient city such as Heaven Do City and Easty City. Heaven Do City has existed for over 20,000 years, as early as the era of the Martial Soul Hall. This was one of the greatest cities on the continent and had even held the title of being the greatest city back in the age of the Heaven Do Empire. Chapter 163 The Melancholic Prince Charming. The Pre Federation Sun Moon Empire later annexed the Heaven Do Empire and turned Heaven Do City into an ordinary city. Tang Wuling clearly remembered, however, that the city was founded on a splendid location. It was right beside the legendary Great Stardo Forest, which teemed with soul beasts, and was fairly close to the Great Trek City, said to be the very core of the Dulua continent. I wonder when I'll be able to visit Trek City and Great Stardo Forest. What will it be like? Heaven Do City was completely different from Easty City. Tang Wuling had thought Heaven Do City would have taller and more developed buildings, but only when he saw Heaven Do City did he realize that it was his own imagination. His initial impression of the city was that it was simple and plain. That was right, simple and plain. The city was filled with old era style buildings, but what was most surprising was that not a single skyscraper could be seen. The tallest thing in his line of sight were actually some towering ancient trees. Teacher Wu, why aren't there any skyscrapers here? Tang Wuling quietly inquired. Wu Zhang Kong explained, Heaven Do City is a historical city. In order to preserve its historical value, the city imposed regulations that buildings were not to surpass 50 meters in height and were, at most, 10 stories high. These regulations are the reason why you will see plenty of ancient trees taller than 50 meters rather than skyscrapers. A lot of history fanatics love this city and come here as tourists. This city is filled with culture and was actually where the Tang Sect was first founded. Even now, there is an important branch of the Tang Sect situated here. Tang Wuling's curiosity was piqued. Then what about the Tang Sect's headquarters? Where is it? Wu Zhang Kong gave him a sharp glance. The headquarters? It's in Shrek City, of course. Oh, it suddenly struck Tang
The two entered the shop. Its signboard said Yuao's roasted fish. Seeing the name of the shop, Wu Zangkong's eyes instantly lit up. No wonder it smells so good. It's actually this shop. Tang Wulin asked, You've been here before? Wu Zangkong answered, Yuao's roasted fish is famous in the central part of the continent, especially in Heaven Do City, Shrek City, and Star Luo City. It was said that the recipe for their roasted fish was passed down from the founder of the spirit pagoda, who are Yuao. That's where the shop got its name from. It was also said that he used his roasted fish to with the dragon butterfly duo. Speaking of which, your name is rather similar to the dragon butterfly duos. Her name is Tang Wutong. A hint of yearning colored Tang Wulin's eyes. So those legendary figures love to eat too. Wu Zangkong's face twitched. That's what you have, what I said. Hey. Tang Wulin awkwardly scratched his head as he tried to suppress his impatience to eat. Teacher Wu, let's go in then. Yuao's roasted fish bustled with noise. Even though it couldn't be considered a proper restaurant, the shop was filled to the brim with customers savoring the delicious fragrance of the roasted fish. The two seated themselves in a corner. Wu Zangkong had clearly been here numerous times, so he ordered several dishes quickly. But with Tang Wulin's input, he just ended up ordering ten of every single dish. Roasted fish tasted the best right after it had finished roasting. The skin would be crispy yet have tender and succulent meat. The light fragrance and delicate fish stock combined to create one of the world's delicacies. For once, Tang Wulin was able to eat until he was satisfied. Although he could eat a lot in the academy's dining hall, there was just one problem with its food. Their taste was only decent. Every meal he had had at the dining hall was only for the purpose of filling his stomach and nothing more. Yet every bite of roasted fish was pure bliss. Tang Wulin's face was flushed from the delicious roasted fish. A Light twinkled in his eyes, as if he was prepared to eat his own tongue together with the fish. After gracefully eating two roasted fish, Wu Zhangkong shifted his attention to Tang Wulin's eating performance. That's 91 fish in total. The price. Wu Zhangkong had gotten the bill. Thank you, Teacher Wu. Tang Wulin was so invigorated after eating so much that he actually wanted to eat some more. Wu Zhangkong merely looked at him. It must have been hard for your family to raise you. Only after staring blankly at Wu Zhangkong for a moment did Tang Wulin realize that Wu Zhangkong meant his ability to eat. Teacher Wu actually knows how to tell a joke. Teacher, what are we going to do now? We'll find a place to stay first. You were in a deep meditation for seven days after all. After washing up and changing into a fresh set of clothes, we'll go out again. Wu Zhangkong said. Okay, the Inwu Zhangkong chose was by no means luxurious. In fact, it was very plain. Its only merit was that it was clean. Wu Zhangkong only rented out a single room with two beds. The first thing Tang Wuling did was wash up and take a relaxing bath. He changed into a clean set of clothes and felt completely refreshed. Wu Zhangkong took a little longer than Tang Wuling to wash up before changing into a set of almost identical white robes. His white robes fluttered about while his long hair draped behind him. He had already used his soul power to evaporate the water in his hair. We're going. A trace of melancholy swept past his eyes as he peered out the window. Tang Wuling had a feeling that the moment he entered Heaven Do City, there was a change in Wu Zhangkong. Leaving the inn, Wu Zhangkong chose to continue their journey on foot. It was clear though that their pace had sped up. Wu Zhangkong laid Tang Wuling with familiarity along the winding streets that gradually changed from bustling crowds to quiet chillness. Just where are we headed? Turning onto a small, narrow road, there were even less people to be found. Only two soul cars could fit side by side on this street. On one side of the small road was a tall wall. A dense thicket of vegetation could be seen over it. On the other side of the road was a forest. Tang Wuling felt a clear change in Wu Zhangkong's mood as they walked this road. Both Wu Zhangkong's breathing and pace clearly sped up. But what was even more obvious was the disappearance of the usual coldness in his eyes, replaced by complicated feelings. Depression, longing, and melancholy could all be seen in his eyes. If he was usually described as white robes and blue swords, sky ice and smoke cold, then now he could only be called a melancholic man. He had completely shed off his shell of coldness to reveal his original warmth, but this change was still overshadowed by the complex emotions within his heart. They followed the road for another 500 meters before a gate appeared in the large wall. Heaven Do Public Cemetery. Tang Wulin's heart trembled at these four words. This is actually a cemetery. A chill crawled down his spine. Teacher Wu brought me to a cemetery. Who is he paying his respects to? Chapter 164. The Grave of Longing. Sure enough, Wu Zhangkong led the way into Heaven Do Public Cemetery. The plant life seen peeking from over the walls was actually part of the cemetery. A collection of large trees were orderly arranged between the gravestones. Wu Zhangkong's robes fluttered behind him as he entered, seeming to fit in as a ghostly specter. This was Tang Wulin's first time entering such a place, and so his gaze began to wander. There were only a few people present in the cemetery paying their respects to the deceased. As if possessed, Wu Zhangkong didn't stop until they arrived at a gravestone just off of the cemetery center. The gravestone was tall and adorned with a few simple words: The Grave of Longing. Longing? Who's that? It sounds like a girl's name. Wait here. Turning around to speak to Tang Wulin, Wu Zhangkong's tone had thawed from its usual to a warm tenderness. Okay. Tang Wulin considerately moved to stand at the side. Now holding a white cloth, Wu Zhangkong began to clean the gravestone. Each movement was filled with heartfelt gentleness as if he was caressing a most cherished item. The gravestone wasn't dirty by any means. In fact, only a thin layer of dust covered it. In no time at all, it was sparkling clean as jade. Compared to the other gravestones, it was clearly much brighter. The tenderness in Wu Zhangkong's expression had completely eclipsed the melancholy and sorrow he carried before. As if in a trance, not a single word left his lips as he caringly wiped the gravestone clean. Though Tang Wulin wished to step forward and lend a hand, something told him that he shouldn't disturb his teacher in such a moment. A stifled feeling pressed down on him. After a full hour of earnest cleaning, Wu Zhangkong finally finished and stood up to gaze upon the gravestone. His eyes filled with a level of love and kindness never seen until now. It was as if the spring winds had blown a smile onto his face, creating a cozy atmosphere around him. You were always fond of white, so I'm wearing today. You said you liked my smile, so I will smile only for you. Binga, how are you doing in the next world? As he softly spoke, Wu Zhangkong's fingers traced the grooves that made up the name Longing. Not a single tear escaped, presenting only a gentle smile. By the time they left the cemetery, it was already evening. Wu Zhangkong had assumed his usual cold attitude, and Tang Wuling didn't dare to ask anything. All he could do was follow behind his teacher. Longbing should be a relative of Teacher Wu, right? Or could it be one of those lovers she talked about before? Without bothering to explain anything, Wu Zhangkong simply led the way back to Heaven Do City. Crowds of people were bustling along the warmly lit streets of Heaven Do City. The shops had opened long ago and were engaged in fast and hard business transactions. Though Wu Zhangkong had regained his composure, Tang Wuling's image of him had been irreversibly changed. Teacher Wu isn't really a cold person. He said his smile is only meant for that person. What do you want to eat for dinner? Wu Zhangkong peered at Tang Wuling inquisitively. Huh? Anything is fine. Tang Wuling was fine with anything as long as it was food, not one to overcomplicate things. Wu Zhangkong decided thus, let's go for noodles then. Some delicious noodles. Tang Wuling's interest was piqued. Wu Zhangkong had actually described the food as delicious, something out of character of him. These noodles really are delicious. Tang Wuling thought to himself for the tenth time as he devoured his tenth bowl. The noodles were cooked just right and were perfectly complemented by the rich soup. At first glance, it seemed to be a simple dish with only some meatballs and vegetables as toppings, but the taste was amazing. Wu Zhangkong had only eaten one bowl, but he had savored each and every noodle. The previous tenderness had resurfaced in the depths of Wu Zhangkong's eyes, astonishing Tang Wuling. Although he wasn't smiling, that gentleness in his eyes along with his handsome looks had the mysterious effect of melting the hearts
After they finished eating and paid, Wu Zangkong brought Tang Wuling back to the inn. Go meditate. We're getting up early tomorrow morning, taking a few minutes to wash his face first. Wu Zangkong quickly climbed onto his bed and began meditating cross legged, taking care not to disturb Wu Zangkong. Tang Wuling silently crept to the front of the bed and peered out the window. It was deep into the night, but Heaven Do City was still thriving with warm lights and ratty people. Tang Wuling liked this city far more than East City. Instead of the cluster of skyscrapers that made up the core of East City, there was history, culture, and most importantly, human warmth that permeated throughout Heaven Do City. At his young age, Tang Wuling wasn't able to understand that this ambiguous feeling originated from the culture and history of the city. In the moments of twilight, as the sky transitioned from darkness to a deep blue, Tang Wuling was stirred awake by Wu Zangkong. Tang Wuling could clearly feel the mysterious Heaven Methods' greater efficacy compared to the standard methods provided by the Academy. In his first session, he had entered the deep meditation and refined his body, and in the second session, there was a tangible increase in his soul power. His soul power and body had blended together and were now working in complete harmony, completely devoid of the unease his bloodline had previously brought about. Though Tang Wuling's body hadn't increased in power, it had definitely increased in toughness. Let's go. Wu Zangkong beckoned to Tang Wuling. Tang Wuling hastily rushed over to Wu Zangkong, and the moment he reached him, Wu Zangkong grabbed hold of his arm. A sudden gale struck Tang Wuling, and the next thing he knew, they were on the inn's rooftop. From behind Tang Wuling, Wu Zangkong reached over to grasp his head. Two fingers poked into Tang Wuling's jaw, the thumbs pressing into the temples, and the remaining three fingers stabbed into other acupuncture points on his face. Feel how my soul power circulates. I'll have you start cultivating the purple demon eyes soon after. Breathe according to the mysterious heaven method and look to the east. Every morning, there is a streak of white rising from the east. The moment it appears, it is followed by a trace of purple chi. The Tang Sex Purple Demon Eyes is a method to absorb that purple chi and use it to improve eyesight. When we absorb that energy, we are also cultivating our spiritual power. Understood. I understand. It wasn't hard for Tang Wuling to comprehend such a simple idea. Thin threads of soul power began pouring into Tang Wuling's facial acupuncture points from Wu Zangkong's fingers. His face immediately felt refreshed as if he was washing it in a crystal clear spring. The feeling was simply indescribable. Amidst this feeling of clarity, Tang Wuling noticed that his eyes had grown stronger, and he was able to see far away things even more clearly now. In complete silence, he memorized how Wu Zangkong's soul power flowed throughout his face. Gather your soul power and follow my guidance. Steadily breathe according to the mysterious heaven method, reminded Wu Zangkong. Tang Wuling quickly did as instructed. He was already familiar with what he needed to do and spurred on by Wu Zangkong. It didn't take long for him to begin circulating his soul power as needed for the purple demon eyes. Right at that moment, a streak of white crept up on the horizon, and for the first time, Tang Wuling noticed the purple of the morning dawn. Suddenly, the purple light seemed to fill his eyes, and a comforting warmth permeated through them. He didn't know why, but tears began to well up. But instead of streaming down, they glistened and created a thin layer across his eyes. An indescribable feeling of soothing and warmth were absorbed into his eyes, merging into their depths and the minuscule acupuncture points surrounding it. Chapter 165, Branch Master Zhao of the Tang Sect. How mystical. Though he couldn't feel a change in his spiritual power, there was an apparent change in the clarity of his eyesight. This really is an extraordinary eye cultivation method. It really deserves to be one of the Tang Sect's secret methods. The purple chi disappeared as quickly as it came. It truly was an ephemeral existence. Wu Zangkong had stood behind Tang Wuling, patiently guiding Tang Wuling's soul power according to the purple demon eyes method till the end. The horizon shone with a halo of light as the sun vanquished the darkness with its slow ascension to its zenith. With dawn's brief moment of twilight gone, Wu Zangkong removed his hands and let Tang Wuling absorb the secrets of the method completely. Done. From now on, draw the purple chi into your eyes every morning and immediately cultivate for half an hour. Cultivating the purple demon eyes will take time and constant practice to reach a high level. You will progress rapidly in the beginning, but it will soon be difficult to improve and you will eventually stagnate. How do you feel now? Wu Zangkong said. Tang Wuling nodded and said, I feel warm and comfortable. I can see in greater detail than before now that my vision is clearer. The colors are more vibrant too. Wu Zangkong eyes glazed over. You really feel like that? You're not exaggerating. Tang Wuling shook his head. Nope. It really feels like that. Thank you, Teacher Wu. An unknown emotion clouded Wu Zangkong's mind. He distinctly remembered that when he had first begun cultivating the purple demon eyes, it had taken him half a month to reach that stage. Could this child be compatible with the purple demon eyes? This is the first time he's cultivated it, yet he has already progressed so much. Peering into the depths of Tang Wuling's large, bright eyes, Wu Zangkong could only nod. Continue practicing. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Let's go down now. The two quickly washed up and ate breakfast. Fortunately for Tang Wuling, the inn they stayed at provided buffet style breakfast. Even a child as cute as Tang Wuling was unwelcomed once the inn discovered his unparalleled eating prowess. This was a commonly heard tale of Tang Wuling. Teacher Wu, what are we doing today? Tang Wuling asked with youthful curiosity. Wu Zangkong answered, You're staying in the room to cultivate the purple demon eyes method today. This method is still beneficial to your spiritual power even without purple chi to enhance your eyesight. Oh, okay. Tang Wuling deflated. He had wanted to go out and see the city with Wu Zangkong but was tasked with cultivating inside the room. Tang Wuling never imagined that this continued for half a month. Every day in the early morning, Wu Zangkong would observe him cultivate the purple demon eyes, provide guidance when necessary, then head out alone to take care of some unknown matters. Where was the relaxation mentioned? Tang Wuling was immersed in gloom and boredom. Although he had a relatively steady temper, he was still a child. Coming to such a magnificent city yet unable to explore it at all, it was no wonder he was dejected. To make things worse, Wu Zangkong had forbidden him from meditating. He was to focus on practicing the purple demon eyes method to increase his spiritual power. Such a monotonous life truly was dull. Fortunately, the improvements were more than enough to motivate Tang Wuling onwards. It seems that not only was he exceptionally compatible with the purple demon eyes, it was the same for the mysterious heaven method. He had made significant and smooth progress in both of these two Tang sect methods. Studies. Cultivation of the mysterious heaven method had stabilized. While his speed was not considered fast, it was greater than before. Tang, Wuling's most prominent discovery though was that could condense his soul power with the mysterious heaven method. As such, despite not increasing its volume, his soul power had become incredibly dense. He had immersed himself into condensing his soul power after Wu Zangkong told him, but the greater degree of purity and density his soul power was, the further he would reach in the future. Tang Wuling's cultivation of the purple demon eyes was extremely quick. He reached the first realm of the purple demon eyes that Wu Zangkong had mentioned in half a month. The world seemed to slow and become crystal clear in the wake of him circulating soul power going to the purple demon eyes method. The smallest of details and changes were all observed by him in this state. For instance, every speck of dust was clearly outlined under the gentle gaze of the sun. He could even discern the faint veins of distant leaves. Without such spectacular results, Tang Wuling would have found it too dull to persevere. Today was their 15th day in heaven, though see yet Wu Zangkong had only brought him around town on the first day. He had been up in their room cultivating for the other days. After cultivating the purple demon eyes and eating breakfast, Wu Zangkong finally spoke the words Tang Wuling had been yearning to hear. Let's go, you're coming with me today. Okay. Teacher Wu, where are we going? Tang Wuling was jumping with joy at the long-awaited chance to go out. Wu Zangkong turned around and said to him, Did you feel that cultivating was very dull these last 14 days? Though Tang Wuling was taken aback for a moment, he quickly regained himself. He spoke truthfully, in the beginning, it was like that,
Wu Zhang Kong walked away, leaving Tang Wuling to catch up. Just like before, they walked on foot. This time though, they went heading for the suburbs. No, this time, they headed straight for the core of the city. Tang Wuling didn't mind walking at all. In fact, Tang Wuling was fond of it as it gave him the chance to look around. Heaven though city truly was a city filled with beauty. Whether it be its historical sites, breathtaking scenery, or culture, it had it all. The lesser soul cars compared to Easty City changed the mood of the city up there. Was a qualitative difference between Easty City and Heaven City. The two incomparable. Heaven City, however, was far less industrialized than Easty City. Two hours on foot later, the two arrived at their destination, an antiquated garden. The garden was surrounded by tall, motley walls and a vermilion door. There were no signs or markings to name this aged garden. Wu Zhang Kong briskly straight over to the door and pressed his right hand on it with practiced movements without any regard to its outward appearance. This. Isn't this the same action teacher we did when we were at the dazzling Yiratang sect? A faint light swept over his body and beat once before the door opened. Wu Zhang Kong led the way in. The vermilion doors silently closed behind them. Inside was a space that was untouched by time and without any signs of soul technology. It possessed an aura so pristine that it was almost as if they were back in the ancient era. You've brought him. A deep voice penetrated the silence before an elderly man walked out from the only building present in the garden. The old man's short height emphasized how fat he was. Coupled his bald head, he looked almost like a mountain of meat. Wu Zhang Kong actually let his usual arrogance go and bowed in greeting to this old man. Branch Master Zhao, come on in. Is this really a Tang sect branch? Tang Wolin wondered. Tang Wolin was all beyond comparison the moment he entered the building. Two rows of towering sculptures lined each side, exuding a majestic air. The building appeared to be a single-story building that was no taller than five meters from its exterior, but he was shaken to discover that once he was inside, the ceiling was well over 30 meters tall in the interior larger. The sculptures loomed over him at a height of more than 10 meters. These sculptures were of both men and women, all appearing to be in their twenties, and were displayed with an assortment of martial souls. Tang Wolin suddenly found a familiar figure among the sculptures. The third sculpture on his left was a smiling, sweetly young lady with a delicate figure. In her left hand was a three-legged cauldron, while in her right was a flute. Chapter 166: The Legends of the Tang Sect. She. Isn't this the girl I fought in the Hall of Heroes? She appears more mature in this sculpture though. The one I fought was when she was a young girl. This is the flute cauldron Duluo, Xia Xiao. One of the numerous titles she held was being a member of the Spirit Pagoda's founders generation of the Shrek 7 Monsters. Her three cycle soul cauldron and nine Phoenix flute twin martial souls were famed for their strength. Then the other sculptures should be of the remaining Shrek 7 Monsters in her generation, right? Tang Wolin's excitement soared as he recalled all his favorite tales of the Tang sect that had been imprinted in his heart. The most famous were the first generation of the Shrek 7 Monsters, in particular, the illustrious Thousand Hands Duluo Tang San, leader of the Shrek 7 Monsters and founder of the Tang sect. After that was the next generation that existed 10,000 years ago, the generation of Spirit Ice Duluo Huo Yuao, founder of the Spirit Pagoda. He rebuilt Tang sect from its crumbling husk of an organization back to its former glory. Tang sect never stopped shining majestically throughout the from then on. Despite their achievements though, the Federation had a less than kind view of them. After all, the Spirit Ice Duluo had led his comrades to force the Sun Moon Empire into a peace treaty. There were even some that said that the following generation's great emperor was the Spirit Ice Duluo's illegitimate child. No one knew whether this doubtful story was true or not, however. Ah. Uh. The person beside Xia Xia should be K2, right? Then the ones over there should be the mysterious underworld Duluo, Shi Sanchi and the demon rabbit Duluo, Jang Nanan. The one at the front with shining eyes and six spirit souls should be the spirit pagoda's founder, the legendary spirit ice Duluo, who are Yuao. Legend said that he had a million year sky dream ice worm as one of his spirit souls. He also had two of the ten great soul beasts of the time, the glacial heaven snow empress and the frost jade scorpion empress. The hundred thousand year arctic bear king and hundred thousand year eight pointed frozen grass were also among his array of spirit souls. There was no mistaking his claim as the most legendary figure of the time. Unfortunately, no one knew what happened after his earth shattering, heaven turning battle with the beast god, Di Tian. The beast god vanished while the spirit ice Duluo and his wife, the dragon butterfly Duluo, disappeared altogether. Perhaps only the other five members of that generation's Shrek Seven Monsters would know where the two had gone. Tang Wolin felt as though he were right there with them as he gave upon the sculptures and recalled the legends of their epic adventures. Tang Wolin's eyes glowed brighter when he switched his gaze to the sculptures on the right. If the left of the Shrek 7 monsters from 10,000 years ago, then the right should be the original Shrek 7 monsters. The sculpture of the Civet Duluo, Juzul King, one of the original Shrek 7 monsters and a founding member of the Tang sect, stood at the very back. In front of her was Ning Rong Rong, the Nine Treasures Duluo. There were rumors that said she transformed her support type martial soul, the Seven Treasures Glazed Pagoda, into the Nine Treasures Glazed Pagoda. With it, she had brought the sect 10,000 years of prosperity. The bloodline of the Nine Treasures Glazed Pagoda was rare even in ancient times. Now it was nearly a legend of years long gone. Many other powerful martial soul bloodlines of the ancient era shared a similar fate and were lost with the passage of time. The demonic fire phoenix Duluo, Mahonjin with his flaming phoenix, stood before Ning Rong Rong, as one who bore the exalted title of being one of the Shrek 7 monsters. It was only natural for his demonic fire phoenix to be known as a martial soul that stood at the world's peak. In front of him was the food god Duluo, Oscar. What's that revolving around him? Is that a sausage? Ah, uh, that's right. I heard his nickname was Big Sausage Uncle. Standing further along the line was a man with a regal ear, the white tiger Duluo, Daimu Bai. It was said in the stories that he was the strongest member of the Shrek 7 monsters for a long time. Tang Wolin finally looked at the two most magnificent sculptures in the forefront. He didn't know why, but a shiver ran down his spine the moment he set his eyes on them. An incomprehensible feeling of warmth and longing filled him. His gaze rested on the girl in a pink dress first. Her sculpture was carved exquisitely, every line and curve capturing her essence and filling her with a spark of life. Her long scorpion braid hung down her back while her large, beautiful eyes accentuated her sweet smile. Even though spirit souls hadn't existed in that era, a pair of rabbit ears popped out from the top of her head. She was the co-founder of the Tang sect and the only member in the entire history of the Shrek 7 monsters to be a human transformed soul beast, soft bone Duluo, Xia Wu. She was supposedly a hundred thousand year soul beast that gained human form and became the Tang sect founder's lover. When her identity was revealed and others aimed for her life, the Tang sect founder didn't hesitate to protect her with his life. Yet, just when she was about to truly metamorphose into a human, the soft bone Duluo chose to sacrifice herself and become the Tang sect founder's soul ring. Though the Tang sect founder lived thanks to her sacrifice, all that remained of her was a corpse. Tormented by his loss, he used a rare herb to just barely preserve the core of her life. He finally managed to resurrect her after undergoing many trials throughout the world, utilizing every method he could think of and severing his own arm to retain the soul bone he had received from her sacrifice. Such a romantic tale of tragic love moved the hearts of countless people. It was also because of such a heart wrenching story that the original Shrek 7 monsters were the most renowned. Tang Wolin took a subconscious step forward as he regarded the sculpture of such an eminent figure. His gaze wavered and his body began to feel feverish as he felt something calling out to him. His heart in turmoil, he turned to look at the foremost figure. This striking man had long awkward blue hair that trailed over his shoulders while a smile warm and serene. In his left hand waved a strand of blue gold grass and a pitch black hammer, and spread from his back right spider legs that were stretched out like an array of spears. An air of simplicity and mystery clung to him, but it was the resplendent golden trident in his right hand that offset those previous airs. The head of the long trident had an
Wu Zhang Kong's sudden instruction roused Tang Wulin from his stupor. Tang Wulin hastily straightened his back and fought back the urge to keep admiring the sculptures around him. The two of them respectfully bowed three times to the two large words Tang Sect. Pride gushed from the depths of Tang Wulin's heart. This was the pride of being a Tang Sect disciple. This is the Tang Sect, the Tang Sect with over 20,000 years of history. Seeing that they finished their three bows, the old man gave them an approving nod. Now then, you two follow me. The old man led them to the left side of the hall. Wu Zhang Kong pulled on Tang Wulin's hand, indicating for him to follow and quietly said, This garden was established by the Tang Sect's founder, Tang San. It's also the place with the longest history in the Tang Sect. It was seized by someone else 10,000 years ago, but Spirit Eyes Duo Huo took it back and used this place as the starting point to rebuild the Tang Sect up to what it is today. This isn't the Tang Sect's headquarters anymore, but it's still a critical location to the Tang Sect. Every year the core disciples of the Tang Sect come here to pay their respects. The only reason you're able to come here today is because your membership has been approved now. My membership has been approved. Then, I'm an actual Tang Sect disciple now. Tang Wulin was on cloud nine at the moment. Old man Jiao brought them into a side room. Silence pervaded the simply furnished room. Only a seemingly timeless wooden bed which exuded an air of antiquity sat in the room. The old man turned to face Tang Wulin, expressionlessly saying, get on the bed. Huh? Tang Wulin's brain stopped working. Wu Zhang Kong quickly asserted the order. Do what branch master Jiao says. Oh. Tang Wulin replied blankly, then took off his shoes and climbed onto the bed, sitting cross-legged. Old man Jiao climbed onto the bed with him. When Jiao placed a hand on his shoulder, a slight floating sensation enveloped his body. A moment later, Tang Wulin found himself facing the other direction. Old man Jiao sat down behind him. Pay close attention and loosen your body. Relax both your mind and body. As he complied with the old man's instructions, two strings of soul power bore into his pack, one firm while the other gentle. It's the mysterious heaven method. His familiarity with the method allowed him to immediately recognize the root characteristics of the old man's soul power. Yet Tang Wulin had never faced such vigorous soul power before. He felt like a small boat drifting along the tides of the sea that was old man Jiao's soul power. Chapter 167. Tang Wulin's endurance. Very quickly, Tang Wulin felt bloated as an unknown pressure expanded within his body like inflating a balloon. The swollen sensation transitioned from a mere discomfort to piercing pain as time on. His meridians and internal organs began to groan with pain and in response, his blood grew frenzied and widened his meridians, dulling the pain until it was just a numb throb. Ah! Uh. Tang Wulin yelped in surprise. His already swollen body began to enlarge once again, sinking his mind into a muddled state. After an unknown period of time, the distended feeling subsided like the ocean tide. It was as if it had never been there in the first place, leaving Tang Wulin feeling utterly refreshed. A shiver ran down his spine and he woke from his involuntary slumber. Branch Master Jiao stood by the bed, astonishment written all over his face. He sees little Zhang Kong. Just where did you find such a freak? His soul power is obviously weak, but his body is extraordinarily strong. With a respectful tone muting his usual bluntness, Wu Zhang Kong said, Branch Master Jiao, what are the maximum level of spirit souls and soul rings do you think he can bear right now? Branch Master Jiao paused before replying. The spirit soul's level is dependent on spiritual power, and soul rings are dependent on the body, so it shouldn't be a problem for his current body to support a thousand year soul ring. After 4,000 years old, Wu Zhang Kong's face now mirrored the branch master's look of amazement. He hadn't expected Tang Wulin's body to actually be able to bear this much. An ordinary soul master's first soul ring could reach up to 400 years, yet Tang Wulin's body was already more than 10 times stronger than his peers and his meridians had proved to be extremely durable as well. It was normal for anyone who discovered such a little freak's capabilities to feel astounded. Wu Zhang Kong's voice still held a trace of surprise as he clarified, So you're saying that if his spirit soul evolved into the thousand year level and he has sufficient spiritual power, if he had two soul rings, each will be 2,000 years. By the time he breaks through to two rings, his body will have grown even stronger, and at that point, wouldn't he be able to support two soul rings of the 3,000 year level? Branch Master Jan nodded in affirmation. You could think of it like that. Of course, that's assuming he has enough spiritual power to support a 3,000 year spirit soul, which is approximately 200 points of spiritual power. What is his current spiritual power level. Wu Zhang Kong recalled Tang Wulin's remarkable results as he said, he has already started cultivating the purple demon eyes and he is very compatible with it, showing much insight. With such a powerful method and coupled with his perception, he should make quick progress in his spiritual power until he reaches the spirit sea realm. I estimate that his spiritual power has already broken through 100 points since his spiritual power was already extraordinary to begin with, so it should be no problem for him to acquire a 2,000 year spirit soul and a pair of 2,000 year soul rings. His spirit soul should also improve further as he cultivates his spiritual power, but since his soul power is only rank 16 at the moment, he'll need at least half a year to a year to reach rank 20, and that's only in the best of circumstances. He should have plenty of time to increase his spiritual power. A mysterious smile tied at Branch Master Jiao's lips as he ran his hands over his shiny bald head. I understand now. You've been planning on raising him to be extraordinary from the very beginning. Not bad, not bad. He seems like a promising disciple. Tang Wulin sat there without speaking, blankly listening to the two converse and unable to comprehend their conversation. Wu Zhang Kong's voice snapped him out of his daze. Wulin, thank Branch Master Jiao. Tang Wulin hastily scrambled off his chair and bowed deeply in gratitude. Thank you. Branch Master Jiao dismissed his gratitude with a wave and spoke with a profoundness that was beyond Tang Wulin. Not bad. It seems we have another promising young disciple in the Tang sect now. We'll be taking our leave then, Branch Master Jiao. The Branch Master responded with a knowing nod. Go then. You can give him the Tang sect badge now. This child has great potential. Teach him well. Yes, Wu Zhang Kong gave a respectful salute and made her leave the branch with Tang Wulin. Teacher Wu, I don't really understand what you two were talking about earlier. Were you saying I can still improve my spirit soul in the spirit ascension platform? Wu Zhang Kong nodded. Branch Master Jiao has a gentle and pure martial soul which is suited for accurate measurements of bodily endurance and tested you. Now my goal is to upgrade your spirit soul to the 2000 year level so your soul rings will be at the 1000 year level at the very least. Your physique is already strong enough so you must focus on cultivating the purple demon eyes. Quickly reach the spirit sea realm and don't get distracted. Once you reach that realm, you won't have to worry about your spiritual power again until you attain six rings. Yes. A thousand year spirit soul? A thousand year soul ring? Tang Wulin's heart raced with excitement and yearning. Wu Zhang Kong was fully aware of the effect his words had on his disciple. Now we're going to the spirit pagoda to measure your spiritual power. The local spirit pagoda branch was situated in the center of Heaven Do City, surprisingly closer to the local Tang sect branch than one would initially assume. Though it couldn't compare in size to the one in East City, its simplistic architecture exuded an ancient elegance. Be careful of what you say once we enter. Listen and observe closely instead of speaking. Do not be fooled by appearances. There are many powerful people within the spirit pagoda, especially so in Heaven Do City. With his teacher's cautionary words, Tang Wulin stepped past the pagoda's simple doors and was immediately assailed by noise. An endless stream of people entered and exited, bustling to and fro within the pagoda. Compared to East City's trickle of people, this was akin to a steady current. Tang Wulin suspected that not only were they all soul masters, they were likely far more powerful than him as well. They conducted the spiritual power test in a small, isolated room after paying an excessive 5,000 federal coins. The cost of living in Heaven Do City truly couldn't be compared to East City. As for the results, they were unexpected, to say the least. Even Wu Zhang Kong had a look of shock. 124. Tang Wulin's spiritual power had nearly doubled. It would not have been surprising if he were a spi
However, has caused it to mutate and has affected your spirit soul as well. Even now, they continue to transform. This is beneficial to you. With your powerful body, you can upgrade your spirit soul further than your peers. It would naturally be upgraded too. Perplexed, Tang Wulin asked, Teacher Wu, I understand that I can upgrade my spirit soul further, but what do you mean by naturally? Chapter 168, Intermediate Spirit Ascension Platform. Wu Zhang Kong said, There are unnatural existences too. Some large clans or sects use heavenly treasures or unique methods to stimulate their disciples' bodies. With stronger bodies, they are able to contain more powerful soul rings and spirit souls. But this isn't done normally. Only in rare situations where the disciple fire excels in one aspect will such a method be considered. Take Yue for example, with her high spiritual power, she only needs to strengthen her body before she'd be able to upgrade her spirit soul as you did. Unfortunately, with two soul rings, it would be too difficult for her to strengthen her body to the necessary level now. This is the key point that allows one to possess a pair of thousand year soul rings and a thousand year spirit soul. Though Yue's physique has strengthened with the addition of another soul ring, it only serves to amplify the areas she already excels in and widens the gap between her existing weaknesses. It truly is a pity. If her situation was better, I would help her regardless of whether or not she joined the Tang sect. Currently, your current greatest advantage is in your soul power, which has, by nature, grown inversely proportional to your physique and spirit power. In such a situation, you are able to evolve your spirit soul further than your peers without resorting to unnatural methods, which will free you from any future side effects. That's not all though. Through this, you'll be able to lay a firmer foundation. So it is absolutely crucial to your future that you do not waste this opportunity to aid you in evolving your spirit soul as quickly and as safely as possible. I'll enter the spirit ascension platform together with you. Before we can do this, I'll need to obtain two intermediate spirit ascension entry cards since only those with seven rings and can enter. The soul beasts will be more vicious and harder to deal with in the intermediate level, but that also means their year levels will be higher, about the same as the ones in the Great Stardo Forest. With my help, it shouldn't take too long to gather enough spiritual energy. Intermediate spirit ascension platform? Puzzled, Tang Wulin asked, but Teacher Wu, can I really enter the intermediate level with only one soul ring? Wu Zhang Kong assured, there are no minimum rank requirements. As long as you have the necessary entry card, you'll be able to enter even an advanced spirit ascension platform. In fact, the spirit pagoda actually wishes to see weaker entrance. Quicker deaths mean fewer resources expended, and it's actually very common for large clans to escort the younger generation in like I am. The difference, however, is that their charges usually lack the necessary physique or spiritual power to fully take advantage of it, quickly reaching their limits at the hundred year level. Since the advent of spirit souls, it wasn't body strength that perplexed most soul masters, but rather their spiritual power. In order to grow stronger, more spirit soul fusions are necessary, yet this increases the spiritual power requirements. Sadly, 80% of soul masters are just barely able to reach the spirit sea realm and host three spirit souls, because they're unable to break their limits. A few are spurred into using daring methods that forcibly raise their first spirit soul to a high level. 10,000 year spirit souls are the hardest to obtain since they can't be artificially manufactured. Luckily, my fifth soul ring is at the 10,000 year level despite my spiritual power, which is only at the peak of the spirit sea realm. Normally, this only allows me to support three spirit souls, but with a 10,000 year spirit soul, I'm able to have four soul rings, allowing me to cultivate to eight rings. That's my limit though. If I want to make any more progress and fuse four spirit souls, my spiritual power will need to break through to the next realm. But that is a dream that I will likely never achieve in my lifetime. As long as your first spirit soul evolves to the thousand year level, you won't have to worry about your first three soul rings. Then if you attain another thousand year spirit soul for your second and somehow attain a ten thousand year spirit soul for the third, you will have opened the path to potentially becoming a title duo. These are my hopes for you, and I hope you'll make it your goal. An epiphany struck Tang Wulin. This entire explanation of being from the perspective of a high level soul master, a viewpoint so far above his young age and inadequate experience. Entry cards for the intermediate spirit ascension platform are hard to obtain and practically impossible to buy with money. Any cards that a city possesses is completely monopolized for internal use, which leaves us with two options. Either trade for them or buy them in an option. Tomorrow night we'll try our luck at the auction house, and if that fails, we'll have to arrange a trade. You should be able to trade your rebellion spirit ascension platform entry card for two intermediate level ones. A new question occurred to Tang Wulin. Teacher Wu, why aren't we doing this in Eastie City? Wouldn't it be easier since we're more familiar with the area? Wu Zhang Kong shook his head. The three of you are too outstanding and caught the attention of Eastie City's spirit pagoda. I doubt Yue would have joined them otherwise. With their growing influence, it would be troublesome to draw more attention to yourself when you evolve your spirit soul to the thousand year level. The situation in Heaven Do City is more favorable for our goals. There are many more geniuses and large clans here, with no clan explicitly dominant. The chances of drawing unwanted attention will be far less if your talent only shines for a moment amongst the rest. Tang Wulin finally understood how much deliberate planning and considerations Wu Zhang Kong had put into this endeavor. Okay. I understand. It wasn't Tang Wulin's first time visiting an auction house. He had been to the one in Eastie City before, the moment he walked through the great doors of the Heaven Do Imperial Auction. However, he finally understood how lacking Eastie City's auction house truly was. The Heaven Do Imperial Auction hosted their weekly events in an enormous Imperial Hotel. Beautiful paintings lined the brightly lit hall and a magnificent crystal chandelier hung from the ceiling. Each seat was a comfortable leather sofa, while tables to one side of the hall held a variety of refreshments, including pastries, fruits, drinks, and alcohol. This was to be expected, of course. Wu Zhang Kong had paid a deposit of one million federal coins to gain entry for the two of them. It was only this cheap because Wu Zhang Kong had presented themselves as father and son again, meaning they only had to pay one deposit. They donned the masks that every guest received with a numbered sign upon entry. The auction house is splendid as old Tang Wulin, his heart trembling at such a lavish scene. It's so big. Over 300 people were present on the ground floor. This didn't include the occupants of the second floor's private rooms. Wu Zhang Kong was unfazed by the atmosphere of luxury, his icy expression remaining steadfast. Teacher Wu, here, take my savings card, said Tang Wulin as he presented it to Wu Zhang Kong. There's a little over 3 million federal coins inside. Please manage it for me. The intermediate entry card would definitely be expensive, and Wu Zhang Kong was once again acting for his sake. So Tang Wulin felt that it was only natural that he contributed his own money. Where did all this money come from? Wu Zhang Kong faced Tang Wulin with a frown. I earned it from blacksmithing, Tang Wulin replied frankly. Wu Zhang Kong was left speechless for a moment. He soon composed himself and asked Tang Wulin, What is your blacksmith rank now? Tang Wulin brightly answered, Third rank. I should have known. I originally thought those thousand refined vests had been partially forged by you, but they were actually all your handiwork, weren't they? Amen. Tang Wulin nodded, only 10 years old and he's already at the third rank of his secondary occupation. Even with his limited knowledge about blacksmithing, he understood the significance of reaching the third rank, but he chose not to comment on it or pursue the topic further. A half hour later, the lighting dimmed and the clamoring crowds quietened. Welcome, honored guests, to the Heaven Do Imperial Auction. Our weekly auction is about to start, and I am pleased to tell you that we have many great items to offer you. We have spirit fruits, rare metals, battle armor, mechas, and other unique items. We will now be handing out tonight's program. Please look through it in the 20 minutes before the official start of the auction. The backs of the sofas lit up with gentle lights while several scantily clad young ladies arrived, smiling seductively as they handed out the programs. Different auctions had different rules. Some auctions revealed the catalog in advance, but Heaven Do Imperial Auction did not do so. This prestigious auction was highly reputed throughout the continent, and though it could not be deemed one of the best, it had its own distinguishing features. The goal of this au
Will a big option like this have the four spirit items I need for the next seal? Thinking of this, Tang Wulin shifted his gaze to the section containing spirit fruit. He was taken aback by the very first item, thousand year. Those two words popped out at him, even all the spirit fruits that followed were at the minimum of a thousand years. This auction doesn't sell any spirit fruit at the hundred year level, it really is a high class option. He recalled the four items he needed, two of which were spirit fruit. Will they have it? Scanning the catalog once more, it didn't take long to find what he was looking for. His eyes shined upon reading the sixth line. Thousand year dragon scale fruit. It's a thousand year dragon scale fruit. Isn't that one of the items I need? Tang Wulin trembled at the thought. Although he had a few years until he turned fifteen and had to break the second seal, the necessary items were far too rare. He had already searched East the City's auction houses and even the Eastern Museum's auction in hopes of finding them, but had come out empty handed. He couldn't enter the high levels of the auctions, and the common level wouldn't sell anything at the thousand year level or higher. How could he not be thrilled by the sudden appearance of something he absolutely needed? But when he saw the price, his face began to twitch. The starting price was two million federal coins, and the estimated sale price was between three million and five million. So expensive. It took half a year of hard work to earn three million, but this thousand-year spirit fruit is going to cost three to five million. So expensive. Nonetheless, this was his first time coming across one of the necessary items. Compared to when he had needed the hundred-year ice crystal fruit and scarlet flame, his mentality now was completely different. He was no longer skeptical. His belief cemented by the rapid growth he experienced after breaking the seal. He also wondered about old Tang's promised surprise that was waiting beyond the second seal. Teacher Wu, I want to buy this. Tang Wulin pointed at the thousand-year dragon scale fruit. Wu Zhang Kong frowned, asking, "Why do you want it?" Tang Wulin lowered his head to think. A moment later, he answered, "Actually, Teacher Wu, I have a secret. When my bloodline awakened, I instinctively knew what my body needed. Sometimes I could even visualize them in my mind. Do you remember my growth after the hurricane? I had used a hundred-year ice crystal fruit and a hundred-year scarlet flame fruit to break through during the storm. Back then." I wasn't sure if I was just imagining things or not, but after testing things out, my strength really did grow exponentially. Now new spirit items have appeared in my mind, and the thousand-year dragon scale fruit is one of them. Astonishment rippled through Wu Zhang Kong's eyes. So you're saying that your body is this strong because you ate those two hundred-year spirit fruits? Amen. It only took a moment for Tang Wuling to determine the necessity of telling Wu Zhang Kong. Of course, he couldn't reveal the sealed golden dragon king or old Tang. Those were his greatest secrets, never to be divulged. But he knew he'd be with Wu Zhang Kong for years to come, and it'd be discovered sooner or later anyway. So he needed to give an abridged version of his situation at the very least. It was also imperative that he obtain the thousand-year dragon scale fruit. He knew Wu Zhang Kong wouldn't aid him without a good reason, and without his teacher's help, he wouldn't have enough money. Wu Zhang Kong smiled over Tang Wuling's story. His icy eyes pensive. He can feel what items his body needs. What kind of ability is that? It's unprecedented. He would have scoffed at Tang Wuling a few years ago, but he was different now. He had been forced to acknowledge Fu Yue's control over six elements, so he couldn't immediately reject the possible reality of Tang Wuling's strange body. He was once again reminded of Shrek Academy's motto: Shrek Academy only accepts monsters, not ordinary people. Maybe my students really are monsters. All right, I will help you buy it. What else do you need? Wu Zhang Kong's gaze bore into Tang Wuling. Tang Wuling shook his head after looking through the catalog once more. There isn't anything else in the catalog. The other three items I need are a thousand year Azure veined vine, a thousand year land dragon tendon, and a thousand year sea dragon marrow. Tang Wuling could only force out an embarrassed smile. He only knew the names and nothing else. But it was clear that the thousand year land dragon tendon was the tendon from a thousand year land dragon. As for the other two, he hadn't been able to find any records on them. The only reason he was still so relaxed was because there was still plenty of time left. How will you benefit from these four items? Asked Wu Zhang Kong. Will your body transform again? Is there any danger? Tang Wuling was at a loss. He himself didn't know how to answer because he was just as clueless. The pain from breaking the first seal had left him on the verge of death, but he didn't know if it would be the same for the second seal. But how could he tell Wu Zhang Kong the truth? If he knew, Wu Zhang Kong would never support his decision to break the seal. My physique will improve and my bloodline will transform, and I'm certain the change will be for the better. I'm not sure how much my body will improve though. His words were both true and false. While it was true that his body would grow more powerful and his bloodline stronger by breaking of a seal, he skirted around the topic of danger. Wu Zhang Kong nodded. Sea dragons are a type of big sea soul beasts, and they've already vanished from the continent. Their marrow is mainly used for consolidating foundations by strengthening the chi and blood, and since it doesn't have any side effects, it's in high demand and extremely rare. You don't need to lose hope though. East Sea City is one of the largest coastal cities on the continent, so there's a chance we can find it there. As for the thousand year as your vein vine, I vaguely recall hearing in Shrek City that it's a plant type soul beast that used to be abundant in the Great Stardo Forest ages ago. The forest is dilapidated now, but if it's to be found anywhere, it will likely be in Shrek City. The thousand year land dragon tendon should be fairly easy to find in any large city, but it will be Expensive. Just like the sea dragon marrow, it strengthens the body without any side effects. Thus is another priceless and in-demand item. Chapter 170, Thousand Year Frozen Grass. At Wu Zhang Kong's words, Tang Wuling was delighted. He knew he wouldn't have to worry about finding the items needed to break the second seal in the future with Wu Zhang Kong by his side. Thank you, Teacher Wu. I'll work hard to earn enough money to buy them all in a few years. Tang Wuling glowed with optimism. He saw hope now. According to the current estimated timeline, he still had five years to break the second seal, and when he did, he probably would not have to worry about the next seal until he turned twenty. He was only ten right now. He was certain that an opportunity to break the third seal would appear in those ten years of peace. Wu Zhang Kong responded with a slight nod and didn't continue the conversation. Although he certainly could help Tang Wuling find the items, and it would be easier for Tang Wuling. He had no intentions of doing so. One would never truly cherish something if one didn't obtain it oneself. Only by relying on oneself could one walk forward steadily. This wasn't for the sake of cultivating one's strength, but for growing one's character. Though the items Tang Wuling spoke of were expensive, they were not impossible to obtain when considering the blacksmith rank he had achieved at such a young age. It was only a matter of time before he could buy them. Wu Zhang Kong determined that it was best for Tang Wuling's growth if he worked for it himself. On a desk, we will begin the auction shortly. A tender and melodious female voice resounded throughout the hall. The lights dimmed while the stage lights glowed, serving as a signal for a beautiful lady in a dark red dress to make her entrance onto the stage. She gave a slight bow to the seated guests. Several staff members that were each charged with an area of bidders appeared from the side to aid the auctioneer in controlling the bidders once the bidding started. The moment a bidder raised their sign, the staff member would point them out to the auctioneer, helping facilitate the proceedings. First, let me welcome all of our honored guests on behalf of the Heaven Do Imperial Auction. Now for the first item. The lady didn't waste any words and cut straight to the point as she walked to the back of a gilded wooden table with a smile. A cart was pushed onto the stage while a screen at the back of the stage lit up. Our first item today is the very rare spirit fruit frozen grass. As everyone knows, the frozen grass is a top tier ice attribute spirit fruits and will be of great assistance to any ice attribute soul master. We sacrificed much to acquire this thousand year frozen grass, so I will tell you, our honored guests, that this is the best spirit fruit we are auctioning today. The cart was covered by a red cloth, sitting on it was a jade white box. Mr. Cold eyes overflowed from its opening, enshrouding the light blue grass that was swaying gently within. A faint halo of purity surrounded the crystal clear grass as if it was carved from a gem. So pretty.
one of his spirit souls was an eight points frozen grass, meaning it was a hundred thousand year level spirit grass with its own consciousness. It truly was a powerful plant type soul beast, and the fact that it became the spirit ice Dulo's spirit soul shows that understanding dawned upon Tang Waling. So it's like that. This spirit item is actually really ordinary. The starting price is one million federal coins, and each bid must exceed the previous by at least one hundred thousand federal coins. Let the bidding begin. A wave of signs flew up throughout the auction house the moment the bidding started. This was the auctioneer's goal and why they placed it first. Auction houses would always sell their best items within the first three or five shown. This way, they could set the most profitable move of the auction. What the auctioneers wanted most was for the bidders to lose their rationality and make bids well over the market value of an item, thus selling the items for an exorbitantly high price and reap the profits. The price soon exceeded three million. While the starting price was low, anyone with a discerning eye could see just how valuable it was. It may not be worth much to a soul emperor like Wu Kong, but it was a priceless treasure for two to three ring soul masters that could increase their soul power by two ranks and improve the basic qualities of their martial soul. The allure of such potential was irresistible. The chaotic bidding soon quieted down when the price reached a level where only the bidders on the second floor had wallets deep enough to afford it. Five million. A bidder on the second floor cried out a jaw dropping bid. The thousand year frozen grass flickered with a blue light as though it was responding to the bidder. The silence was cut short. However, when another bidder on the second floor announced, six million, they immediately raised the price by one million. Six million five hundred thousand. The previous bidder called out, seven million. The second bidder firmly stated, the smile on the female auctioneer's face grew wider and wider. Seven million exceeded the market value of the item. A mere six million. Although it was a rare species, it was simply too young, only having one point. If it had two points instead, the price would have truly been sky high. Seven million five hundred thousand. Tang Waling couldn't see the bitter inside the box clearly, but then he remembered he had the purple demon eyes. He activated it and his eyes easily pierced through the darkness. The bitter in the fourth box was beginning to fume with anger, gnashing his teeth. Eight million. An unwilling voice called out from the sixth box. The fourth box finally ceded defeat. The price had clearly exceeded the true value of the thousand year frozen grass. Nine million. The eighth box dropped a number that left everyone speechless. Ten million. Yet, the bidder of the sixth box was more resolute. Silence filled the hole. This time, no one raised their sign to contend. Ten million going once. Ten million going twice. Three times. Sold. The auctioneer slammed her hammer down. The first item of the auction, Thousand Year Frozen Grass, had been sold at the astounding price of 10 million. Tang Waling made a somewhat unsightly expression. He hadn't expected that a Thousand Year Spirit Grass could sell for such a preposterous price. How much would the Thousand Year Dragon Scale fruit sell for then? If it reached a similar price, he definitely couldn't afford it. If all the four items he needed were this expensive, he feared he wouldn't have enough money by the time he turned 15, even if he poured all his efforts into completing forging tasks. Frozen Grass is special. The only reason I can imagine they paid such a high price is that they wanted to continue raising it. This isn't a normal price. You don't need to worry. Wu Zhang Kong whispered assurances into his ear. When Tang Waling turned to look at Wu Zhang Kong, he found Wu Zhang Kong sitting upright and still with his usual icy expression. His teacher, we're really a cold person. Why does my heart feel so warm now? Sure enough, things proceeded according to Wu Zhang Kong's words. The Thousand Year Spirit Fruits and Spirit grass auction after would sell for high prices, but nowhere near as high as the thousand year frozen grass. Tang Waling let out a breath of relief. Next, our fourth item for today a thousand year dragon sail fruit. Dragons are the most powerful soul beasts, according to legends, and the dragon sail fruit thrives on soil that has been soaked in the blood of a dragon. Its name comes from the faint traces of dragon scales on it. We don't know whether the legend is true or not, but we are certain that it really does need to be watered with dragon's blood to grow, making it extremely difficult to nurture. From our examination, it is highly probable that this dragon scale fruit has absorbed the blood of a highly powerful dragon type soul beast, and thus more potent than other fruits. Thanks so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Also, leave a comment down below with suggestions on what novels to read.